Hi, and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, we're working on this monster. Yes, it really is a monster. Look at the size of it. Oh, you think your clod's big? No. That is the juggernaut, and that's not the juggernaut. This is a clod. So there you go. Both pretty much the same sort of sizes. Uh, obviously, this one's highly modified. Now, uh, this was obviously brought out to replace the clod uh, and um, address some of the issues with the clod. Now, it turns out, ooh, let me just put it back down again, that this turned out to be a bit of a disaster for Tamiya. Now, when they first brought this out, and they brought it out on the kit 58232, and it came out on the 29th of March, 1999. It was a disaster. Gearboxes were failing straight away and they recalled it, uh, ripped them off the shelves and they also brought out an upgrade uh, pack for people that already purchased them. So they quickly rushed around, fixed the gearbox issues as well as a few other little bits and pieces. Uh, and then they re-released the Juggernaut 2, which is this one. Now this was kit 58256 and this came out pretty much exactly a year after the Juggernaut was released. So that was the 22nd of March 2000. But Again, it didn't sell that well, and within two years, it was discontinued. So believe it or not, the whole run of the Juggernaut is only three years from the first release to it being discontinued. So sales didn't go very well, and I think by that time, people had just loved their clods, and there was many modifications for the clods and things like that, so people just didn't move away as much, thus making these quite difficult to find, very expensive, um, to get in any real good condition and very rare. Now they are bonkers heavy. This truck, there's so much metal on this truck and it feels so heavy so I actually weighed them. So I'll put some pictures up here you can see 4.75 kg. Now if you don't know kg I'll put below what that is in uh, in uh, other money. Now five kilos, what does that weigh? This, that is five kilos. That is the same as this. So yeah, there you go, that's how heavy this truck is. Yeah, I don't pick them up very often as you can tell. <laughs> I thought the clod was a lot lighter. Now my clod is highly modified and it's got a carbon chassis, but even that's 4.12 uh, kilos. Now if you put a battery in this, you're pushing five kilos. So there's not about 600 gram difference between the two, but this feels so much heavier. So I've managed to find a whole new body because this truck is in really good condition, but the body is shot. It's been painted a couple of times and it's got scratches and all the chrome's gone funny and there's loads of damage to the front and to the rear as well. So the body is pretty much a write off. Now to replace the body on this is a, uh, yeah, it's not the easiest thing because you still got a source. Windows, anti-roll bar and lights. Tail and wing mirrors. Plastic lenses for the lights. Front bumper, lower front bumper. Rear bumper, wing mirror inserts. Uh, exhausts and inner tail lights. Now, these are more for the high lift. The original one just had stickers for the lights, but in the later one, they modified it and they cut them out. So I needed those as well. So it will, if anything, this is a nicer body with more detail. So I can put rear lights in where in this one, you can only put lights on the front. And the original uh, front grille, which we will need painting. So that's what it takes to put a new body on one of these. So if you're thinking of getting one of these, if you can find one with a good body, I would recommend it because once you add all this together, you could then put that money into just getting a better truck. But being that you might not see that many around, options are very limited. You've got to go with what's close. Obviously posting something like this is very expensive because it's just massive and it's obviously so heavy. Right, let's pack this away because that will be for another day. Um, I've got to pick up the paint, but I can get that from the local car shop, so that's not a problem. I'm gonna go stock red, just like the box art, um, because I like it. MCI decals are on their way, hopefully should be with me soon. And like always, I buy stuff from MCI and then they do a 
then they do a discount code. Do you know how many times I've bought MCI decals and then like three days later, there's a discount code. I swear, they wait for my orders to come in and then they put out a discount code. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's coming. I've managed to pick up a manual, which is great because after I've dismantled it, when I build it back up again, I'm gonna need one of these because I'm not that good. So what I'll do, um, we'll cut to some basic running footage for you so you can have a look at it. I won't put any music on it so you can get a good listen to what it sounds like. Um, that was completely stock. Uh, I didn't put it on LiPo or anything like that. It's very slow. Um, steering is weird, very weird on this. Um, yeah, it was really, sometimes it would barely steer at all and other times it used to steer a lot. Now, once the steering had kicked in, it turned really sharply, or pretty much as sharply as my modified clod. So I think the problem lies in that the servo that's in this is just a very old vintage servo, plastic gears, not up to it at all. But the way that they've done it is they still have a single servo driving the axles to give you the four wheel steer, but they seem to have improved it. So I think if I put in a nice 25, 35 kilo servo that's modern with a bit of voltage, it should steer really well. Now I've also managed to pick up the upgraded uh, um, rods for this car because the ones that they use in this and the clod are a little bit flimsy as well and you lose a little bit of um, strength and uh, precision. So I'm gonna change that out as well once they arrive. Apart from that, everything ran pretty much exactly as I wanted it to. It was nice and smooth, there was no grinding of gears or anything like that. Right, let's take the body off. You can have a look at the chassis and then we will strip it down. But before that, let's go and have a look at the running footage. So there you go, as you can see, not exactly gonna win any races, is it? <laughs> yeah, but it was fun to drive and it has uh, lots of potential, I think. But mainly I think sticking new electronics in this is definitely the way to go, as well as putting in some torque tuned motors and getting it on 2S LiPo to give it a little bit more punch will bring the car to life. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do servo on axle mods or anything like that. I wanna try and keep it as stock as possible. I will keep the mechanical uh, uh, mechanical speed controller in the car, um, but I will swap out everything else. Right, let's get the body off and let's have a look. So I've dismantled the body and these are all the little bits and pieces that you need to keep because once you start losing one of these, they turn into a bit of a pain that can really slow down. Now, if you're thinking about doing a restoration, uh, I wouldn't jump into it if you had never done any kind of building of cars first. Restorations are a ton more work than just getting a new inbox kit, opening it and building it. Because you have everything you need, it's right there, it's in great condition, and you have every screw, nut, whatever. Once you're restoring something that's original, that's obviously been around for 20 odd years, um, people mess with them. That's the other thing is if you're looking to buy a restoration project, try and find one that hasn't been messed around with. 
because uh, when kids, when you're younger, you start using different screws and everything, and then the, the screws are all wrong and they're the wrong sizes and you're missing screws or there's just screws that are just not there and all that kind of stuff and then it makes it much harder to restore it or things start going missing like battery covers then you've got to try and source a battery cover so like if this was missing a battery cover where am I going to get a Juggernaut 2 battery cover from? almost impossible and then you get to the point where sometimes you've got a project where you need a part that's so rare you have to buy another car just to get that part to then sell it on which is a lot of work sounds crazy but I've actually done that myself a couple of times um, so trying to find one that hasn't been messed with and still complete regardless of the condition of it as long as it's complete it makes your life so much easier um, dismantling the body thing few things I learned it was originally red then it was painted yellow and then it was painted with emulsion yep and it was the emulsion that basically screwed it up the red looks like it was painted reasonably well um, don't know about the yellow can't really tell uh, the body's actually in really good condition there's no damage at all as in no cracks or anything so I don't know I might try and soak it and see what happens uh, we'll see um, windscreens again they're pretty good the rest is the, the back bumper section where you can see it's red again is not damaged the bright work stuff is destroyed it's all damaged across the bottom now this one you, you could sand it down and then paint it a different color like do it in gunmetal or something a bit more modern um, but the rest is pretty much toast uh, from, from that point of view the front uh, where is it one thing's damaged. Where are you? Oh, this the the front grill has uh, had both sides snapped off because I've got them here. They have snapped clean off, so you can't really really use this again, unfortunately. Um, so I will hold on to it just in case. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, that's the body. Now I'll put that away and I'll bag it up, and then we'll we'll concentrate on the chassis. Be right back. So I've been chipping away at it. The front uh, protective areas and the steering has been removed. Um, I removed the um, uprights uh, on both sides. Um, I've just taken the back section off. So far, there's only minor damage that I've seen. The front and rear metal plates to protect the steering, they're a bit more scuffed up. Um, so I'll see if I can source some new ones. If not, I'll try and polish these ones up. Uh, only real damage um, that's not from just general driving the the clamshell back section uses these hinges and for some reason it looks like maybe the body was hit and it's bent one of the uh, hinges now I don't see why I can't just put that on a flat surface and tap it flat it's not actually damaged apart from just being buckled a little bit so so far apart from that we are good I've started taking off the rear suspension as well. They are pretty pathetic, just friction shocks. Um, I'm sure I can probably pick up some replacement oil shocks would be nice, but we have a uh, very old fashioned leaf spring suspension on this thing, which are very strong, very, very strong. Right, so uh, the next thing I've done is taken off the top deck. So I've just got that to remove. And now you can start to see, oh, look, we've got spiders, dead spiders and everything. So there we go, you can start to see inside. Right, I'm gonna carry on stripping out the front section of the mechanical speed controller and then see if we can start going down through the chassis. All this stuff looks to be in really good condition, if not slightly manky, but uh, yeah, all good. I'm sure it will clean up lovely. Let's carry on. We've been chiseling away at it, 
Both ends are now completely removed. The top decks are gone. Whoever built it in the first place was using Loctite, so it looks like it was put together with someone who spent a little bit more of effort. All the nuts and bolts are all still great. Everything seems to have been fitted together exactly how it should have been. So uh, it was constructed well. It's filthy dirty, hence why I've now moved on to using my mask, because in this tiny little uh, studio, it doesn't take much to fill the air with horrible dust. And it is pretty manky, as if it sit on, sat on the top of a wardrobe for many, many years. So we'll keep going. So we're finally getting there. Both axles are now dismantled. I'm happy to report that all the lovely, strong, massive metal gears are beautiful. There is nowhere whatsoever. This uh, truck has done very light use. There is almost nowhere on anything. Really chuffed with that. Lots and lots of bushes. So I'm glad I stripped it down because I need to get rid of those crappy bushes and get some nice bearings in there. It's gonna be a lot of bearings I'm gonna need, but that should really help the truck from a friction point of view. What's next? Well, we're finally down to the two main metal chassis rails, and then there's just a center uh, gearbox to do. Um, so we're getting there, so we're at the final hurdles, and then after that, it's gonna be many hours of cleaning parts um, there's no new parts that I really need to look for from the uh, car point of view. Just a set of rims would be nice. Apart from that, we are golden. So I'm really chuffed with this truck. I'm glad I got it. And that is a fully dismantled Juggernaut 2. What did I think? Eh, pretty good. Not too difficult, but then dismantling cars doesn't tend to be that difficult. Um, this particular one is in great shape, so I'm really chuffed that I bought this one. Um, it looked a bit of a mess, but the actual chassis was golden. Everything is in lovely condition. No cracks, no damage, nothing missing. So I have every nut and every bolt to restore it back to minty fresh. And that's where the next episode kicks in, where we spend two hours cleaning all this, and then another, I don't know, eight to 10 hours putting it all back again, together again. Anyway, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss the next episode of the Juggernaut Restoration. Thanks very much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Check out one of these videos for some more RC fun.